Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Shayantoni Pal, Associate Professor, Department of Ancient Indian History and Culture, University of Calcutta. Today our subject is Indian Culture. The paper is Indian Numismatics and today we shall be discussing on the post Gupta coinage of North India, the various types and the regional variations of the coins. Now here are the learning objectives. First, the introduction in which we shall discuss upon the general features of the post Gupta coins. Then we shall discuss the major coin types of North India. The major coin of types of North India throughout this period are only four that were the king and the fire altar type which is also called the Indo-Sasanian type or also the Gadhaya type. And the second one is the standing king and the seated goddess type. Then we have the horseman and bull type. And we, then we have the seated goddess type. And then we have we shall be discussing upon the other coin types and the regional variation. And then we shall have a short discussion on the weight standard of the coins. And then, then we shall conclude our study. First, the introduction. The post Gupta coinage. Now we should make it clear at the beginning that the post Gupta period is also called the early medieval period which extend from the 600 to the 1300 CE. Now the post Gupta coinage if we do not want to use the dynastic level then we should call it the rather the early medieval coinage. Now the early medieval coinage of North India offers a striking contrast to its immediately preceding period. The artistically superior gold and silver coins of the Indo-Greeks, the Scythopathians, the Kushanas and finally the Guptas were replaced by base silver. By base silver we mean degraded and mixed silver coins with copper, the copper coins and the mixed metal coinages. So have you seen the very good quality gold coin? Please remember about the very good quality gold coins of the Kushanas, the Guptas. They, are, uh, they immediately attracts our attention. But in this period, the uh, normal looks of the coins are not at all good. So they are called the degenerated and degraded coins. Now the shapes and the devices degenerated to a great extent. There was a dearth of coin types. By dearth of coin types, we mean there were several types of coins issued by individual ruler in the earlier period. As for example, for the Kushanas, Huvishka, Arkonishka, they one each one of the ruler issued several coin types. Even during the Guptas, Samudra Gupta, Chandra Gupta the second, or Kumara Gupta the first, each had issued more than six coin types. Even Kumara Gupta the first had issued as many as the fourteen coin types. But in this period the rulers were not at all interested in issuing several coin types rather they liked to continue the earlier coin types so throughout this whole period from 600 to 1300 c we have just four coin types major coin types circulating throughout throughout north india for the whole of north and northwest india as far as the kabul valley there are only four major dominant coin types for the whole period between the 6th to the 12th or 13th centuries so these are the major coin types of North India. We shall begin with the horseman and bull type which belongs to the Northwest which were issued by the Hindu Shahi dynasty in the Kabul Valley. Then we will discuss upon the standing king and seated goddess type which is another major coin type which was issued by the rulers of Kashmir throughout a long period perhaps continuing for more than 500 years. Then we shall discuss upon the king and fire altar type which is also called the Indo-Sasanian or, or Gadhaya type and then at the end we shall discuss upon the seated goddess type which were initiated by the Kalachuris in the central India. First, the horseman and the bull type. The Shahis of the Punjab and the Kabul Valley who ruled between circa 850 to 1026 CE, they issued an extensive coinage bearing all the coins are in silver or they are in mixed metal called bilon. Now what is bilon? Bilon is a silver alloy with a high copper content. So these are the metal in which the Shahi coins are all issued. Uh, they bear on the obverse the bull and the horseman. Now the bull horseman type had a wide geographical distribution outside the Shahi kingdom that is the Kabul valley and it was continued through a long period. The horseman and bull type was first issued by Spalapati Deva. He belonged to the third quarter of the 9th century. Now there is a uh, uh, confusion regarding the name Spalapati Deva, whether it is a personal name 
or it can also be a designation spalapati is derived from the iranian type spadapati which probably means the commander so spalapati may also be an adjective or it may also be a personal name now they bear on the obverse a recumbent, recumbent humped bull with a trident mark on its rump and the legend Sri Spalapati Deva on the obverse. The reverse bears a horseman to ride with a long lance in his right hand and an indistinct object on his left hand. Some Brahmi letters are seen on the upper left corner of the coins. The bull and horseman type which was thus introduced by this Palapati Deva was adopted by some of his successors like Samanta Deva. Now there is again a confusion regarding the name Samanta Deva whether it was a personal name because Samanta Deva may be a personal name or else Samanta means feudatory or subordinate. So he may also be a subordinate. So Samanta Deva may also be an adjective like Palapati Deva. The coins of Samanta Deva bear the legend Sri Samanta Deva on obverse and the letter B along with numerals on the reverse. They had a wider distribution than the coins of Spalapati Deva over North India, Afghanistan and even in Europe. The coins bearing the name of Samanta Deva are widely divergent in their forms, fabric and execution which will again indicate that all the coins bearing the name Samanta Deva were not at all issued during his name and by himself they were probably continued by his successors and by several dynasties of North India and the other parts of India who probably imitated his coin type. Now these are the coins horseman bull type coins of the Shahis. First. Uh, in the upper side we have the coin of Svalapati Deva on the obverse you can see a seated bull a beautifully engraved seated bull in high relief and the legend is over the bull Sri Svalapati and on the reverse you have a horseman he is holding a long lance and there is a Brahmi letter on the left upper side of the coin. Below we have the coin of Samanta Debo which is, is in again in gold and it is very rare uh, because normally the Shahis used to issue silver coins on Bilon coins and copper coins so gold coins are very rare. This coin of Samanta Debo again bears the horseman and to the uh, river uh, on the reverse there is a seated bull engraved in very high relief. This is another uh, feature of the Shahi coins. The devices are engraved in very high and bold relief and over the bull you can see it is a humped bull and over the bull you can see the legend Sri Samanta Deva. Next we shall move on to discuss the standing king and the seated goddess type of coins. The standing king and seated goddess type of coins were issued by the kings of Kashmir for an exceptionally long period which is very striking because continuation of a device for several years is very striking. We do not find these kind of features in the period preceding to the uh, post Gupta or early medieval age. So kings of Kashmir issued the seated king, uh, standing king and seated goddess type for an exceptionally long period beginning from the 5th to the they continued it throughout the 12th century and their prototype what is a prototype prototype is the original type from which a coin device is generally adopted their prototype with standing king offering oblations at altar on the obverse and goddess seated on the throne on the reverse was originally issued by the kushanas which is very important because this indicates that kushanas came into the kashmir valley they conquered that and they issued a coin type which was again adopted by the subsequent rulers of that valley so this was first originally introduced by the Kushanas and their by their successors, the Kidaro Kushanas. The Kidaro Kushanas were a family which probably succeeded the Kushanas in the Punjab. Now this is a coin containing the legend Kidaro. On the obverse, this is a gold coin as you can see. On the obverse, the king is standing facing and he is sacrificing at an altar you can see the altar at the left field of the coin and under his right arm there is written the Brahmi legend Kidara only the key in very high uh, bold relief is clear and under his arm and Kushana is written to the left on the reverse we have a goddess who is called Ardoksho in the Kushana kings and in Gupta coins they adopted this deity and they called it Lakshmi. This Ardaksha is seated 
facing and she is holding a diadem and a cornucopia with a crescent above. Adoksho is seated on a throne. She is so she is sometimes sometimes called the enthroned goddess. So this is also called the standing king and the enthroned goddess device. And there is the Brahmi legend which is not at all legible. Probably it may be Sala. The device of the coins of the Kidara Kushanos are earliest seen in a series of coins bearing the legend Sri Toromano. Now who was Toromano? Toromano or Torman, uh, he was a Huna king who probably conquered the Kashmir valley. Now Toromano on the obverse is written and Kidaro is on, written on the reverse. So when Torman conquered this valley, he liked to continue the name of the Kidaras on the reverse. So Ki is always returned, retained on the reverse side of the coins. These coins belong to the 5th or 6th century. Then we have some coins in which we have the legend Pravarasana. Pravarasana issued gold and silver coins bearing almost the same device. Then several other issues bearing the names of Narendra, Gokarna, etc. bearing the same standing king and seated goddess device are known. These kings also find mention in the Raja Tarangini which is a very famous text written by Kalhan the poet of Kashmir in the 11th century. In this picture, you will see the coins issued by the Kidarites of Kashmir, Torman II. This is a dinar and I will explain regarding the term dinar at a later part of this lecture. It belongs to the 7th century C. On the obverse, you can see a highly, highly stylized king standing and facing. He is sacrificing at an altar like its prototype issued by the Kushanas. And on the reverse, you can see the enthroned god part the enthroned goddess because the throne cannot be seen in this coin uh, she is facing she is holding a lotus flower and diadem and the Brahmi legend at the right is Jaya at a later stage there are two dynasties who ruled in the Kashmir Valley one is the Karkota dynasty and another is the Utpala dynasty these two dynasties find mention in the Rastarangini of Kalahana who has given a list of the Karkota and Utpala kings in the 7th century, so in the 7th century, the Karkata or Naga dynasty came to power. Among the 17 kings of this dynasty mentioned in the Raja Tarangini, the coins of four kings only are found. They are Durlava Bardhana, Durlavaka, Lalita Ditya Mukta Pira, and Jaya Pira. The legend Kidaro was however written on the reverse. The Karkata dynasty was succeeded by the Utpala dynasty in the middle of the 9th century. Now, the obverse bears the seated goddess and the names of the kings are spread out on both obverse and reverse. As for example, Sanka, Sanka the full name is Sankara Varma. So, Sanka is written on the obverse and Ra Varma Deva is written on the obverse. So, in this way, the name of the king is spread on both obverse and reverse. The coins of this dynasty are superior in design. Two queens, Sugandha and Didda also issued coins in their names. These are very unique because normally in ancient India, we do not find coins in the name of queens. But in the Kashmir Valley, we find coins in the name of two queens, Sugandha and Didda. They were very powerful in the politics of Kashmir. So here we have the coins of Durlava Vardhana of the Karkoto dynasty. On the obverse, you can see the standing king sacrificing at altar. The same device as we notice in the coins of the Kidara Kushanos. And on the reverse, we have the enthroned goddess. But you cannot at all identify the standing king and the seated goddess unless you see the prototype. Only by comparing with the prototype, you can identify this coin as that of the standing king seated goddess device. Because as you can see, the device is much degenerated. None of the kings or the queen uh, or the uh, goddess on the hovers or reverse of the coins can, can be identified. There are some letters and the coin flanks are full of dots. This is the coin of Durlava Burman of the Karkota dynasty. Below we have the coins of Kshema Gupta and his queen Didda. Now this is a joint coinage as you can see. So they contain the legend Di Kshema. This coin belongs to the Utpala dynasty. On the obverse you can see the same stylized king and on the reverse you can see the enthroned goddess which who is not at all ident uh, identifiable. Only her corner Kundala is can, you can recognize on the field of the coins and the throne is not at all shown on this coin. 
Now this is a base gold coin. By base gold, we mean very degenerated and debased gold coin of Pratapaditya the second, which shows the degeneration of the device. Furthermore, the obverse contains the figure of the king with key. Again, key for Kidara under his arm and the reverse contain the same degenerated figure of the seated goddess who now appears as headless. You can also notice the shape of the coins which is very peculiar because it is not fully round. It looks slightly elongated. So there was also a degeneration of the shapes of the coin in the early medieval or post Gupta North India. Now we shall move on to discuss the third major coin type which is called the king and fire altar type or the Gadhaya type or the indo sasanian type. So we have three names for the same coin type. Now a particular type of coins circulating roughly from circa 500 to 700 or 1200 CE in Rajasthan, Malwa, Gujarat, Western Deccan, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar is known as the indo sasanian type. Why this is called the indo sasanian type? Because this type were originally issued by the Sassanid kings of Persia and they were they, then again they were adopted in India. So these coins, coins are called the indo sasanian type. It refers to the coins minted in India with debased imitation of the sasanian bust on the obverse and fire altar on the reverse. Now the Fire altar is very considered to be very sacred by the Sasanians because they were the Persians were fire worshippers. So their coin always con, uh, contain the fire altar on the reverse which is again placed on a very fire, high altar to indicate its sacredness and it is also uh, it also contains two attendants on two sides. So all these are to indicate the sacredness of the fire altar as an item of worship by the Persians. Popularly the term Gadhaya is used to designate the coins containing rude imitation of the Sasanian bust on the obverse and lines and dots suggesting the fire altar on the reverse. However, sometimes the term Indo-Sasanian is used for the whole series in general. So, we may call the whole series, whole imitation series which were issued in India in imitation of the Sasanian type Indo-Sasanian or, or else we may call the whole series as Gadhaya. Where do we get the term Gadhaya? The term Gadhaya is found in several early medieval texts. One of the name of one of these texts is Upa Kesha Gatsha Pattavali, which we get uh, where we get the name Gadhaya. So Gadhaya coins, maybe these coins on the obverse, the bust probably looks like an S, and so some scholars suggest uh, suggest that this is the this should be the this Indo-Sasanian coins should be identified with the Gadhaya coins mentioned in the early medieval texts. Now the origin of the Indo-Sasanian type, this is again an interesting issue. The origin of the coins goes back to the coins of the Sasanian king Feroz of circa 457 or 459 to 484 CE. The white Hunas who came from Central Asia, they were a branch of the Hunas. They were also called the Ephthalites. They adopted this coin type after conquering the kingdom of Feroz in circa 488 CE. These coins are thus called the hephthalo sasanid coin. So combining these two terms, the Hephthalites and the Sasanians, we call it the hephthalo sasanid coins. On them, the king wears a headdress adorned with a buffalo head and wings on either sides. The imitation series was started probably by the Hunas in circa 500 CE or a little later. Initially, the Indo-Sasanian coins were struck in silver like its prototype but later debased silver. I have already explained the term debased which means degenerated and mixed. Debased silver or base silver, copper and perhaps bilon coins were also issued. The Hunas were they who brought this coin type in India. However, after their decline, these coins continued to be minted by several Rajput dynasties. Now the Rajput dynasties probably began their rule from the 8th or 9th century CE and they are spread out throughout the whole of western part of and the central part of India. Who are the Rajput dynasties? Normally the Gujar Pratiharas, the Chandellos, the Gaharwalas or Kalachuris, they are called the Rajput dynasties. So these were continued to be minted, these coins were continued to be minted by several Rajput dynasties and gradually they grew thicker and shrank in size. Ultimately they became very 
small coins. They become dumpy and appeared like pellets. Their size grew to 0.5 to 0.6 inches. So very small tiny coins. It has been suggested that the reduction in size was made to meet the local requirements as Western Malwa or Central India was familiar with the Kshatrapa or Gupta silver currency of this size. So this is the Sasanid coins or Sasanian coins. This is the silver drachm issued by Shapur II, the Sasanian king of Iran in around the 4th century AD. On the obverse we can see the Sasanian bust. The, it wears a helmet and the helmet has two wings on either sides and the king is bearded and he has a very sharp nose and he has moustache also and there is a legend on the right of the king and on the reverse you can see the Sasanian fire altar which is placed on a high pedestal and the flames are at the top and this fire altar was considered to be very sacred by the Sasanids or the Iranians so there are two attendants who appear on both sides of the coins. This is the Sasanian issue of Firoz of Iran or 457 to 484 CE and this was probably adopted by the Hunas because when the Hunas came to his kingdom they conquered his kingdom they killed Firoz and they adopted this coin type so in these coins of uh, Firoz we have also uh, we have the same Sasanian bust on the obverse and fire altar on the reverse so now this is the silver drachm of Hephthalite or white Hunas in the Punjab in circa 6th century CE to 12th or 13th century. This is the Dhramma of Western India. By Dhramma, we mean the term Dhramma is again found in the Indian text. By probably this term was derived from the Greek term drachm, which meant coin. A coin which weighed 67 around 67 grains were called drachm by the Greeks. The same weight standard was also adopted by the Sasan Sasanids. So their coins are also called the Dhramma and in Sanskrit this uh, Dhramma has been adopted in the text. These are the several stages of degeneration of the bust on the obverse of the Gadhaya or Indo-Sasanian coins. In the very first picture you can see the bust on the obverse which looks like almost like the Sasanid bust. Uh, on the reverse you can recognize the fire altar but only one attendant can be identified and also look at the shape of the coin. This is very degenerated and this is not at all round and below that you have the second stage of degeneration. In this second stage you have the cheeks on the uh, bust only prominent and the other features of the bust it is not at all uh, clear and on the reverse you have the same fire altar which is very stylized and also look at the shape of the coin which is again not at all round. In the uh, early slide please. In the upper right side you can see the degeneration of the device on the Gadhaya coins on the both the sides are full of dots and uh, writings and on the obverse the cheeks of the bust are again prominent the bust appears to be bold and on the reverse we have a very stylized version of the fire altar only represented with lines and dots you can uh, recognize the receptacle of the fire but not the flames and the fire ped uh, the pedestal on which it stands has been indicated by three horizontal lines and at the end at the right lower corner you can see the further degeneration of the uh, bust and also the fire altar which is not at all recognizable only the receptacle and the flame has been represented by dots the pedestal or the stand of the fire altar does not at all appear on the coin this is a sub series of the gadhaya coins these belong to the class of inscribed indo-sasanian coins with fire altar the first coin on the upper half has been issued by Gurjara Pratihara king Bhoja the first who had this epithet Adi Varaha. So these coins are called Adi Varaha Dramma and below we have another Dramma the Vigraha Pala Dramma which was again issued by the Gurjara Pratihara king Vigraha Pala. These two coin names appear in one of the in their inscription of the Gurjara Pratiharas which is called the Siadani stone inscription. There we have several coin names and there we find the mention of Adi Varaha Dramma and Vigraha Pala Dramma. On the Adi Varaha Dramma on the obverse you can see a very beautiful representation of Vishnu in his Varaha avatar and on the reverse you can see the legend 
in the name of Adivaraha. The legend is Srimad Adivaraha. And you can, why do we call it a Sasanian a subsidies of the Indo Sasanian type? Because on the reverse, it contains the Sasanian fire altar, which you can recognize just below the legend Adivaraha, Srimad Adivaraha. And below, we have another interesting uh, coin type which was issued by Vigrahapala of the Gujara Pratihara dynasty. On the obverse, you can recognize the Sasanian bust and on the reverse, you have the legend Sri Vigra and the fire altar. So, these are called the Vigrahapala Dramas. The Adivaraha Dramma, what are the Adivaraha Dramma? The Gadhaya coins influence the coinages of, coinages of its area of circulation. The influence of the reverse device is noticeable on one side of the series of coins struck mainly in base silver and also in bilon and copper bearing a corrupt version of the fire altar and two attendants and the legend Srimad Adivaraha. The legend refers to King Bhoja the first of the Gujara Pratihara dynasty. The Vigraha Paladramu is a class of coins in silver, bilon and copper and in various sizes again bear crude representations of the bust and altar with attendants and the legend Sri Vigraha on the obverse which I have already explained. The legion refers to Vigrahapala of the same Pratihara dynasty. On some of such coins and on some of other pieces bearing the name Vinayakapala who was the first or second Pratihara ruler of that name, the face of the board appears like that of an ass. Now the last and the fourth type which is the seated goddess type. The seated goddess type was another dominant type of early medieval North India. It first appeared on the coins of the Kalachuris of Dahala. Dahala is in modern Bundelkhand. The coin type was introduced by Gangya Deva who ruled between 1019 to 1042 CE. The obverse bears his name Srimad or Sri Gangya Deva written in two or three lines on the plan. The reverse shows a seated goddess with four arms within circle of dots as border. The goddess is obviously Lakshmi. He is, she is again adopted from the enthroned Ardaksha types of the Kushanas. She holds lotus in two upper arms and the remaining two arms are spread out at her sides. She is seated cross-legged in the manner depicted on the Gupta coins. This is a coin of the Gang Deva. On the obverse, you can very well recognize the seated Lakshmi. She is seated cross-legged. She has four arms and this device is clearly adopted from the Lakshmi seated on the Gupta coins. And on the reverse, you have the legend Srimad Gangya Deva spread throughout the plan of the coin. The coins, bear, there are some debates regarding the coins bearing the name Gangya Deva. The coins bearing the name Gangya Deva are found in gold, base gold, silver, copper and in various other metals. So there are a variety of metals in which these coins were issued. And they were again issued in various denominations like full unit, half unit, quarter unit and one eighth unit. They vary in their artistic merit. Some of are very high quality while the others are very poor in execution. Thus there is a controversy that whether all coins bearing the name of Gangadeva were issued during his reign because we get so many varieties in their execution, in their weight. So, there is a, um, some confusion regarding whether all the coins bearing the name of Gangadeva were issued during his reign period and by himself. Some of them could have been issued by their successors also without changing the name Gangadeva. On the basis of the stages of degeneration of the devices, D.W. McDowell classified the coins into nine types and suggested a period of 200 years for the whole series. Normally 200 years does not belong to the single period of a king. There should be several generations of king ruling throughout several uh, 200 years. So what McDowell wants to say is that the coins bearing the name of Gangya Deva were continued by his successors and by several others with, uh, without changing the legend. Now P.C. Roy on the other hand classified the coins only bearing the name of Gangya Deva into only four types and he assigned them to a period of 25 years that fits well within the reign period of, the, of a single king. Apart from the Kalachuris of Tripuri, the seated goddess type was also adopted by the Paramaras of Malwa, the Gaharwalas of Varanasi and Kanauj, the Chandelas of Jejakavukti, the Jejakavukti was in central India, the Chahamanas of Delhi and Ajmer, the Tomaras of Delhi, the Choluk 
Chalukyas of Gujarat, the Katsapaghatas of Gwalior, the Yadus of Bayana, Bayana is in Rajasthan, and others including the Muslim conqueror Muizuddin Muhammad bin Sam, who is also known as popularly Muhammad Ghori. These are the Lakshmi types coins of Govinda Chandra of the Gaharwala dynasty, which you can very well see that it was actually copied from the coin device of Ganga Devo. Only the legend is in the name of Govinda Chandra, which appears on the reverse side of the coins. And below, we have a very good quality gold coin, which is again issued by Muhammad bin Sam or Muhammad Ghari. This is also a Lakshmi type of coin and this is very striking because normally the Islamic coins were do not show any representation of the goddess because there is a religious taboo in the Islam that you should not represent any uh, image on the coins. There are some other minor coin types which we will now discuss. Apart from these four dominant coin types, some other types were also issued by ruling dynasties in different areas. The Vardhanas of Thaneshwar, of which Harsha Vardhana is a very well known king, and the Mokharis of Kanyakubja adopted the silver currency of the Guptas, showing bust on the obverse and peacock on the reverse. These are the silver coins of Harsha Vardhana. We can very well recognize the peacock on the reverse and the bust on the obverse. These were adopted from the Madhya Desha coin type of the Guptas which contains this bust and peacock type and what is Madhya Desha? By Madhya Desha we generally mean the Gangetic Valley which uh, comprised of the B present Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. And similar coin type was also adopted by the Mokhari king Avanti Varman. Now we have some very well known species from the Samatata. By Samatata we mean the southeastern part of present Bangladesh. Uh, comprising the present Kumilla and Noakhali districts of Bangladesh. This is a very striking and very famous series. These are in pure gold as you can see. Why these are called the Samatata type? Because very, this is a very special type of coin. On the obverse, you can see a king who is probably adopted from the archer type of the Guptas on the on one hand he holds a bow and on another by another hand he is sacrificing at an altar originally you may remember that this device probably first appeared on the coins of the kushanas then they were adopted by the guptas and when the guptas probably conquered samatata because in the Allahabad pillar inscription we have an indication that samudra guptas pratyantar frontier state was samatata so the guptas conquered samatata probably they were they introduced this coin type in samatata on the reverse you can see a goddess which is not who is not at all rec recognizable and this goddess is also adopted from the coin types of the kushanas now why are the samatata coins important because we have gold coins normally in gold pure gold was very uh, rare in early india so where in this region only is in kumilla and noakhali region we have continuation of a coin in pure gold so that was also another issue why gold coins we find only in Samatata. Probably this was due to some trade with the Arabs that we find gold, pure gold coins which is very rare in North India in Samatata. These are again an interesting series of coins which are called the Harikela silver coins. Harikela is the original name of the Chittagong. Chittagong is a district in southeastern part of Bangladesh. It has a very long sea coast and these coins are again you can see in pure silver on the obverse you have a seated bull and you can see in all the pictures only the obverse appears why the obverse appears because these coins only has the obverse these coins do not have, have any reverse side uh, so why these coins contain only obverse and not the reverse these coins followed a very specific process of minting and this is called the repose system of minting. So these are co called the repose coins in which you have only the obverse, the reverse do not have any device. This is another interesting issue which are called bractates of Harikela. These are very thin coins and on the obverse you can see the seated humped bull of the same uh, type. Now there are several other dynasties who tried probably tried to issue some coins of uh, some other types there are the Ratanpur Kalachuris Ratanpur is again in central India the Ratanpur Kalachuris issued coins with the figure of Hanumana on the reverse and another type with lion attacking elephant the type Hanumana has some confusion as Professor Sushmita Vashamajumdar who, who has worked on these coins 
he has uh, uh, the view that this is not at all the figure of Hanumanu, rather these are the degenerated archer device which we originally find in the coins of Kushanas and the later in the coins of the Guptas which we have already seen. Another device of a cow sucking her calf on obverse and Vishnu in Varaha incarnation on reverse was issued by a ruler called Vatsadaman of the Shurasena dynasty in Rajasthan in the 8th century. Now this is the controversy of the Hanumanu type or the lion slayer derivative. Now this is a, there is a common link between the Chandellas who probably who ruled in Jejakabhukti and the Kalachiris of Ratanpur both issued this type but had their own regional de derivatives. So in this period we have at least some attempts by the Kalachuris and the Chandellos to issue some original uh, types going beyond the four uh, coin, major coin types of North India. These are the pictures of the two types issued by Sallakshana. Sallakshana is a ruler of the Chandellu dynasty. Sallakshana Deva. Uh, on the obverse of the coin, you can recognize the seated goddess, and on the reverse, you can recognize the name of Srimad Sallakshana Deva. And below, there is a coin which is so the so called Hanumano type, and which Professor Shushmita Boshumadunda suggests that this is not at all the picture of Hanumano, rather, it is the picture of the archer king adopted from the Gupta coins. This is a coin of the Ratanpur Kalachiri Jajalla Deva. On the obverse, there is a tiger mounted on the elephant. So, this is also called the Gaja Shardula type. And on the reverse, we have the legend in Nagari script Srimad Jajalla Deva. Now, the weight standard of the coins. The weight standards of the coins usually followed their prototypes. The standing king and the seated goddess type of Kashmir was adopted from the Kushanagol Dinarus, which we have already discussed. Thus, they followed the dinara standard of the Roman Ori of 122.9 grains. The Indo-Sasanian or Gadhaya coins known as the Dramas again followed the Sasanian standard of silver dirham or 4 of 4.12 grams which is again about 64 grains. The original Greek drachms for which the standard had been adopted was heavier weighing 67.2 grains. So, the silver dirhams of the Sassanid kings were rather lighter than the original Greek drachms. The seated goddess type also followed the same drama standard. However, some of them are below the standard of 64 grams. The silver, bilon and copper coins of the Shahis bearing the horseman bull device followed the Karshapana standard of silver coins weighing 32 ratis that comes to 57.6 grams. Now the conclusion. The post Gupta or early medieval coins as you can see it is a period of mixed metal coinage because in the earlier period we find pure gold coins belonging to the Kushanas, the Indo-Greeks, the Guptas, they issued pure, pure gold coins or pure silver coins. But in the early medieval period you do not have the purity of the metal rather it is called a period of mixed metal coinage in which the base gold, base silver, Bilon were more popular metal than pure silver or pure gold. The types were limited. Now this is again a striking feature of the post Gupta coins that the type, coin types are very limited. For this period of six, 600 years we have only four dominant coin types circulating in northern India. So this is a very striking feature of the post Gupta coin when we have the rarity of coin types. Please note that there was a rarity of coin types but there were no dearth of coin the volume of the coins the number of coins did not decrease in their volume the ruling dynasties were not interested in putting their portraits or highlight their activities through coinage as for example in the kushana coins we find representation of the gods in various postures we have the coins of uh, one coin in which the king is emerging from among the clouds or in the coins of the guptas we have the king uh, playing music or we have the king as an archer or the king is going to the uh, war uh, riding an elephant riding a horse or the king in various moods the king in relaxing on a throne with her queen so in gupta coins or in kushana coins the kings were very conscious about their images and to represent them in various images but in this early medieval coins the kings were not at all interested in representing themselves in various poses or postures rather they liked to continue the coin devices issued originally by one of their predecessors or by any other dynasties which they liked anonymity which is the name do not appear 
on the coins. The names of the rulers or the issuers do not appear on the coins except in some rare cases and not also in the full form sometimes as you have already seen we have only the initial on the coins so anonymity was another feature since many of the rulers did not issue coins in their names but continued the pieces introduced by their predecessors and large number of coins were being struck even when precious metal was in shortage it points to the necessity of coins in gen the general life of the people thank you